typical British weather. <laughs> so what shall I do? How about a train with you? Hey and welcome to an IC82 review. It's not often you get to see the words Graham Farish in an IC82 video, let's be honest, but they are fantastic makers of, uh, well, manufacturers and designers of N-gauge locomotives. Primarily British ones, I do think they do a few others as well, but it's primarily British outline rolling stock that they do. And of course this is the class 08 that was bought recently for the N-gauge project. Um, a little bit of background on Graham Farish, because it is the first time that Graham Farish has ever been done on the channel, as far as I know. Um, they started in the 1950s making radio bits and pieces, which is a little bit odd, and then they got into double-O gauge stuff, and sort of by the 60s and 70s they were churning out quite a bit of double-O stuff, but it wasn't very good. And there was lots of competition from the likes of Triang and Hornby and loads of other companies. So they kind of ditched that in favour of N-Gage, because when N-Gage appeared, um, there was a bit of a rush for it, and they jumped on that really, really quickly. They were originally British, based in, is it Dorset or Poole, or somewhere down south? But they were definitely British, and they jumped on the N-Gage bandwagon, and they did a, a very, well, a very average job, really. Uh, the, the, I mean, the British stuff is very sought after these days. It's very collectible. And the way you can tell is, if it has a white label, white label on the end, like this, it's made in China. If that sticker is yellow, then it's British, it's made in Britain. And so the, the, the yellow-ended stuff, the really old British stuff, is very sought after, it's very collectible, but it doesn't really get run. And the reason that that's so is because it's not very good. The motors in the British stuff are rubbish. They uh, were made with inferior quality parts, they would barely run at all, if you could get them to run. And the Chinese built ones, um, whilst they're built in China and they may lack the same character and soul as the British ones, they do go. They do run really well. Really well. So that was sort of what happened. And then in 2001, as I say, it was taken over by Batman, the uh, Graham Farish, which is often, it's often shortened to Greyfar. So they often do that. I don't know why, but they often, I have, I've often seen it all over the place as Greyfar. But they were taken over by, is it Kader Industries? I can't remember the name of the... There's basically a gigantic company that owns Batman. Um, and basically, it's, it is that company that owns them, but it is the subsidiary Batman that, that own Graham Farish. So all you need to remember is that this is Batman, basically. This is Batman, but in N-Gage, and with a British name. Just like Hornby is actually Triang, but with a British name, and built in China. Yeah, glad you're following me on that one. Okay, so that's pretty much a little bit of history about the uh, company. They are really nice. Um, there's no detail on the back though to read. There's no information there, which is quite boring. The case is okay though, it's quite nice. I quite like how they're all pretty much uniform size, so they're, they're, they're much easier to collect and they're much easier to stack than double O gauge stuff. Um, taking the sleeve off, we can see that everything comes in this really nice plastic case, just like N-Gage stuff does. Uh, the Dapple Class 58 came in something very, very similar. And again, the instructions are just so big that <laughs> they don't bother to put them in, they just whack them on the bottom like that. And so let's just have a quick look at those before we actually open the model. Um, here we go, Class 08. Class 08, 060 diesel shunter. It's a diesel electric, which I was quite pleased to read about. Um, the, the real thing, not the model. <laughs> but the model is literally just electric. There's definitely no need for diesel. So here we have something that's very, very familiar to the Backman buyer. Basically a breakdown of the components and parts. Useful if you need to replace anything. I've never had to do that, but it's nice that it's there. Running in, the mechanism of this model requires running in without a load for approximately one hour in each direction at moderate speed. So basically, don't couple it up to anything, just let it run around, um, let it get it, let, every, let all the cogs and motors get um, bed in and, and used to being ran and stuff, That make sure all the oil gets around to all the different parts. 
Um, I find an hour is a little bit excessive. An hour is probably a, bit, a little bit too much, to be honest. I, I think 30 minutes to 45 minutes is ample. And that's just going off five years of experience of running in about 150 locomotives. So I, I do kind of know what I'm talking about. But I think 30 to 45 minutes is fine. Um, but it's up to you. And if you don't have a circular, you know, if you don't have a complete loop, a continuous run layout, um, you can buy the rolling roads. They're really quite good. Watch out for some videos on them coming up soon. Um, the rolling roads are fantastic because you can just pop a local on the track, turn it up, and off it goes without going anywhere. So... <laughs> Quite nifty. Um, body removal. Uh, gosh, is it DCC? Can we actually make this model DCC? I wouldn't have thought so. It's just so tiny. But I don't know. It doesn't say. It doesn't say, does it? Mm. I don't think it is. It doesn't say in the box anywhere. No. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Get on track with Batman Collectors Club. I, I, I still need to join this, don't I? Some haven't actually joined the Batman Collectors Club. Um, I will do that. I will do it, I promise. I'll probably do it in the new year now. But I will join at some point and let everybody know what I think. So, let's open the box. Okay, well, it's a really nice box, as I've said earlier. Really high quality, really strong. A great way to store them. It really is. Uh, £65.15. I don't think I paid quite that. I think I, I mean, I pretty much get a discount at most of the model shops I go to, but um, that's a pretty okay price anyway, to be honest. And I think it was a little bit less, which is really quite good. So if we just get all the packaging out of shot. So there it is. And then it's like in a little bubble that we have to sort of take out. And then you take that off, and then out pops the locomotive. That's it. And it's just so cute. <laughs> it really is adorable. It's like a baby class 08. But just look at that. What detail. And on such a tiny model. You see, something that's quite interesting is that when Batman took over the production of all the Engage stuff in 2001, they instantly closed down the British factory and they moved all the production to China. And in doing so, they upped the quality of the models quite significantly by basically retooling everything from scratch. And so, what often happens is that Batman will bring out a full-size Class 08. Well, I don't mean full-size as in four and, a half in four and a half feet gauge or whatever it is. I mean, you know, I'm talking double O. <laughs> so they'll often bring out a double O model. And then about six months to a year later, they bring out the N-Gage model. Like this. And in doing so, it's just a case of on the computers, they can just scale everything down. Some little bits of detail inevitably have to be dropped, but they do the best they can to make it as realistic, to keep it as realistic as possible. And I think in this case, they have done a fantastic job of just that. I tell you, the zoom on this camera, well, not the zoom, but the focus, the focus. Yeah, the zoom is good, but the focus is really good as well. Just look at that. This is O gauge. Um, this is O. This is N gauge. This is less than half the size of double O, and it's just fantastic. Look at that. You've even got the grills on the side, rivets all over the place. I love the wasp striping. This is why I've gone for the BR blue one because I, I do. I've got a a real love for BR blue. It's very 70s, very 1980s. And there's the little coupler. This front coupler is rubbish. That's the one we had trouble with in the Engage project. We just basically couldn't get it to connect to anything. So I'll probably take it out and give it a bit of a, a service and then put it in again. And I'm sure we can get it working eventually. But yeah, it seems like it's pointing up too much as well. It's a really nice model though. Um, a little bit of information about the Class 08, just in case this is the first Class 08 video I've ever seen. I doubt it is, but just in case. Um, the Class 08s are diesel electric. They were built by British Rail at Crewe and uh, Darlington and Derby and Doncaster between 1952 and 1962. And I think there was getting on for about a thousand of them built. And if you include other subclasses like the Class 09, Class 10 and Class 11, then that takes the total to well over a thousand, making it the most numerous locomotive in the entire British Isles. 
and it's so numerous that there's still loads around today. I think there's still at least a hundred um, on mainline duty. Well, I don't think they get used very much, but they could be used if they were, if, if they if they were needed. And there's about sixty in preservation, of which many of them are running on heritage railways every weekend up and down the country. So that is just one. That is one fantastic sort of sex story. That's for sure. Um, and what I particularly love about the Class 08 is that it was based on the Class 11. It was later named the Class 11, but it was originally called the LMS 12033. And so basically what you're looking at here, folks, is of LMS origin. Because the LMS did do loads of experimenting in diesel design. And they hit, on a, they hit upon a very good design in the form of the LMS Class 11. And I did do a video on that. If you want to check out my other videos, do a search on my channel. You will find the video on the Class 11. And in fact, it does appear in the um, Battle of the Shunters. It does very well, to be honest. The Class 11 does. Um, so that's really quite nice. Everything that I, I, everything you know and love about the Class 08 has been reproduced here on this model by Graham Farish. We've got all the rivets. We've got buffer detailing there. There's a little bag that came in the box of detail. Um, let me just show you. Here we go. Can you see it? Okay, so basically these are going to be little vacuum tubes, little vacuum pipes, and I think, yeah, some couplers as well. So it's nothing, you know, amazing, but it's just, just what's needed to basically make the buffer, the buffer beam look really really detailed so I shall apply that at a later stage um, but you've got the fantastic the iconic um, coupling rod there uh, that goes between all the wheels there's even cab detail I don't know if the camera can quite focus on it because it's really hard to see and it is just so small but there is look at that there's even cab detail inside there brilliant the doors don't open but these are metal handrails and there's a metal handrail down the side there too, and I tell you, it's a lot more robust than the double O gauge one, that's for sure. The double O gauge one is really easy to um, snap and break off, but this N gauge one, that's solid, absolutely solid. And I don't think the double O gauge is metal, I think the double O gauge one is plastic, and that is definitely metal. Beautiful. It's an exquisite model, folks, absolutely stunning. To have so much detail and so much character in such a tiny little package. <sighs> such technology. <laughs> Let's put it on the track and see how she runs. Okay, so welcome to the sidings area of the Engage project. This is a perfect little testing ground for a little class of locomotive like this. So I'm just going to put the loco underneath this um, hopper, the M&M's hopper. Although I've run out of M&M's now, so I think it's going to have to be Smarties or Chocolate Buttons or something. Which, well, the, the buttons won't fit in there, but the Smarties will. So, let's get the, uh, the little Class 08 locomotive um, shuffling back and forwards. Oh, do you know, that's just so smooth. I know I said this in the Engage video, but it is. And there's a lovely deep rumble coming from it as well, like it's a really capable motor, like it's a really powerful motor. I shall find out how powerful shortly. Let's check slow speed performance. Oh, look at that. That's DC with barely any power going to it. And it's only now just cut out. If I just give it a little push, it's going again. That's really not that bad, you know. That's really impressive. There's barely any power going to the track at all. And it's got six tiny little wheels. Yet it's still able to go. And really smoothly. It's just beautiful. Such a great mechanism. Um, if I just pan the camera around to the right, you can see that we've got a whole load of hoppers here from the final part of the Engage project. So how about I get those hoppers loaded up with chocolates and we see just how strong the Class 08 is. 
Ah, uh, quick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bit of an error there. Oh, and we missed one. Hey, but I tell you what, it's still, um... It's still coping really well. I mean, if you think about, if you think about it, the weight of the train is increasing every time I put more of these smarties in. Don't worry, I'll stop it in a second now. I'll put them, I'll put them in properly. Ooh, one of them's got stuck. Yeah, if we just stop the uh, the class 08 there. Um, and I turn the camera slightly so you can see them all, alright? Yeah, the... <laughs> The, the class of the way is more than capable. Oh, Smarty's going everywhere. I keep calling them M&Ms. I'm just so used to calling them M&Ms. Wow, look at this. And I tell you what, this adds a fair bit of weight, you know. Um, these Smarties don't weigh very much on their own, but... Once you fill, what is it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 hoppers full of them, it sure has an effect. Oh, I've just lost a few. God, I'm going to be finding Smarties all over the place for months. Right, I think that's probably it. Let's just get it to push them back. Oh, look at that. Plenty of speed as well. Even though in real life it can only do about 15 to 20 miles an hour. That's, I'd say that's probably a scale speed of already more than enough. Oh, we've got an empty one there. Let's just put some in that one. Right, so what's this proving? What's this testing? Well, this is testing... Um, a m this is testing a situation you probably never encountered in real life, actually. In that... If you had a rake like this, you probably wouldn't have it weighing this much. You usually put um, like a little bit of, you usually put like a false base in, like a little bit of plywood or a little bit of balsa wood, and then you usually put the detail on top so that it looks full, even though it's not. And in this case, um, we've actually got 15 hoppers that are full with Smarties, so there's quite a bit of weight. The very fact that this tiny little class 08 locomotive um, can pull them all without any problem is testament to just how good the motor mechanism is, really. Um, but as I've said before, it really has a very dodgy coupling. I think it'll be okay. I think I'm going to take it out now and then go right across the bridge and see what happens. Okay, coupling fixed. Everything's on the move again. Oh, no, we've hit the mouse cable now. Okay, mouse cable out of the way. Let's continue. It, I just find it fascinating that the problems we've had so far have been due to obstructions on the track or poor couplings. But none of those problems have been due to the actual Class 08. The Class 08 has performed flawlessly every single time. It's such a capable little model. I mean, look at that. A huge rake of um, hoppers. And now it's even going up a bank at low speed. Here it goes. Give it plenty of power. Yeah, see, it's gone across fine that time. But if this contact fails at any point, the train just stops. Stops dead. Here it comes. Across the bridge. Just look at that. Brilliant performance in such a tiny little package. And that's with a full rake of Smarties as well. Oh, 
Uh, cracking little loco. Thank you.